Welcome back aviation enthusiasts, fellow aircraft builders. This is the horizontal stabilizer skin and I'm sorry I didn't uh, film a video of me actually bending this. It was a two-person job. I went ahead and cut the blank out in accordance with the uh, blueprints and I actually measured around the perimeter of my rib layout using a piece of string and then measuring that against a straight edge to make sure that the blank in the plans was going to fit my plans built parts and sure enough the uh, measurement was right on. So when you're laying out your skins here for drilling, well let me back up. So when you're bending the skin, the way that I did this was I cut the flat blank out, I took a block of wood and clamped the corner down here, clamped the corner down over there. Once the bend line was measured in place, I went ahead and clamped the edge of it and my buddy and I very gently started to bend this back towards me with these bottom corners clamped into place. Now it'll put a very big sweeping radius along the length of this in there but you have to be extremely careful not to kink the metal. It's very, this is 20 thousandths thick, it's very very easy to kink this metal and so and, and 16 thousandths is even easier and there's a lot of skins made of that. So we very gently pulled the skin back with the straight edge clamp to it down to about the uh, where the wooden blocks were here. I then took uh, this long furring strip here, which I should have used a 2x4, but I used this furring strip instead. It's only about 3 quarters of an inch thick. I then laid it down about the halfway point, maybe the 2 thirds point towards the bend line, being very careful to keep the bend line in the very center of where the U of the material was because that's where you want your radius to be actually measured at. So when you go to fold this over, because these are unequal length legs, you want to be very careful that the apex of the curve, the very center of the U as you're bending it, stays right along this bend line. And uh, very gently just went down uh, with that wood furring strip and just kind of pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed until it looked about right. And sure enough, when I got done, this on its own has almost exactly the right radius in it. Um, it shows in the plans that the uh, this is basically bent at a 90 degree angle with a 27 millimeter radius curve. It's pretty darn close to that using the method that I did and the bend radius, is, it doesn't look like it with this uh, um, reflection, but the bend radius is right along that bend line. So. Anything with a large radius curve in here, you can bend like that, but you have to be very, very careful to leave your bend line in uh, right in the center of the U. And I don't know how to even really demonstrate that well, but you can see here as you bend it around, as you're compressing that that block of wood against the skin around here, you just want to make sure that that's you know that that bend line kind of splits the very center of what you're trying to compress. Um, I had intended to actually do a, a video on that, but I got so caught up and, uh, with having help here and laying it out that I completely forgot to set up the camera to do it. So uh, hopefully that narrative is uh, good enough to give you an idea of how I did it. Going back to the layout here now, the at least on my scratch built ribs, and I don't know if this is true on the kit um, or if you guys will have different uh, results, but the crimping locations for the tip rib here are slightly different than the crimping locations for the nose rib on where the ribs bolt front and back to the spar and I actually trimmed a little excess material off here more than I, I should have when I was forming these but there's plenty of room to get a rivet right down in the center of that with enough edge distance so I'm good there and uh, there's three uh, rivets on the nose rib here the plans actually call for three rivets on the nose rib here, but you actually can only fit two of them right in between these two crimps. So the layout has to be slightly different when you go to do this. The way that I laid these out and measured for them was to take my steel straight edge and starting at 10 millimeters from the back of the spar here, which is where the first rivet goes, I started measuring along the uh, curvature of the rib and I actually just hold the straight edge down in place against the rib and then wrap it around the curvature of it. Now 
That's not a 100% perfect way to do it because you're then transferring it to a flat dimension, but it's pretty darn close because the straight edge actually wraps around the curvature. So, I mean, you may only be off by a half a millimeter or a, or a millimeter in some spots by doing it this way, and it, it should be really, really close. But lo and behold, when you do this, you end up with almost a 40 millimeter, a 40 rivet pitch of 40 until you get to where the, the rivet has to go into the spar, and then you end up at 230. And then you just continue down measuring, you know, where you have to put your rivets. And so I have 40, 80, 120, 160, 200. Then 230 puts me in the center of the spar. Then 260 gets me just ahead of this crimp. And then 280 gets me just behind this crimp. And then the last one fits in there perfectly at about 313, 312, 313 millimeters. So by measuring those out individually, I was able to transfer those measurements to both my tip rib stations and those are where the pilot holes are going to go perfectly to then go ahead and line up to drill the final match drilling on the skeleton itself. And then likewise I did the same thing for where the tip ribs are. Uh, really all the measurements are the same up until you get to the spar and then you just have a slightly different locations because the, the flutes in the uh, nose ribs here are different. Now when you get down to the center of the horizontal stabilizer you don't have a nose rib and the two uh, center ribs. And I know it's a slight weight savings there. You could actually put two uh, nose ribs in there if you wanted to, uh, but the plans only call for one, so that's what I did. So what I'll need to do is measure to where there would be a rib on this station and then mark these nose rib rivet locations that I measured here going off of the front spar line uh, at 230. So I've marked all of my rivet station lines or all my rivet stations up uh, along the rivet line and then I've marked where the spar is spar at 230. So what I'll do is I'll strike another line across all the 230 millimeter marks and where that one nose rib is uh, which is right about here I'll just have three rivets going up this way. And then further I have to put my rivet pitch across the spar, uh, centering it in between uh, rib station lines. So like I talked about in my rivet layout video before, there's a 40 millimeter pitch uh, in between rivet lines, but you end up slightly off at one point, so you have to accommodate um, or compensate for that slightly one way or the other. I started at the inboard rib station here, went 40 millimeter pitch out to about here, and then compensated by shrinking the fan down so it would fit in between roughly here and the uh, outboard rivet station. Starting from that same rivet station, I went 40 millimeter inboard or 40, 40 millimeter pitch inboard until I got to where I couldn't go any further with it and then shrunk it down again so that it would fit into the center rib station. And then the very two center rib stations are exactly 40 millimeter pitch, so they were good there. And then continuing on, I did the same thing 40 millimeter from the inboard right side rivet line this way and then compensated till I got to the very inboard rivet or rib station and then again 40 millimeter this way and then compensated slightly to get to that rib station. So it's a lot of individual measuring and, and layout and things like that and what I'll do is once I get this all pre-drilled and then match drilled to the stabilizer this actually is the bottom side of the stabilizer it's it's this surface remember because this is an inverted wing design this is actually the bottom of the stabilizer. So this is the layout for the bottom of the stabilizer. I'll lay this out, get the uh, pilot holes drilled in A3. I'll, I'll lay out the, um, I'll get it set up on top of the stabilizer, get it clamped in place, and then go ahead and match drill all these holes once I've got the stabilizer squared up. I'll then clico everything together, flip it over, and then using ratchet straps and two by fours and compression blocks and things like that, I'll draw that skin down tight against the nose ribs. And uh, once I've got that done, I'll mark my reference line on this side where my spar line is. And if I have to trim a little bit off, this is a 15 millimeter overhang here and a 15 millimeter overhang that hangs over the back side of the spar. So it overhangs here and here. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be pretty close to right on within a millimeter or two, but if I have to trim, a little bit that's okay if I'm a millimeter or two short I'm fine with that but once I get this clamped down tightly and I know where this skin is gonna lay down on the top of the stabilizer I'll go ahead and mark my spar line 
and then I'll basically do this all over again this uh, measurement layout and everything else the nice thing is is once I've got the top laid out uh, all of the um, ribs or the rivet line across here is a flat surface because the top of the stabilizer itself is perfectly flat so I don't have to worry too much about um, crimp I don't have to worry at all about crimp locations I just have to make sure that I get into the rib stations properly so I can lay out my spar line and then strike my uh, you know using a square and everything strike my uh, rib station lines and then go ahead and measure my rib spacing to make sure that I get the 10 rivets uh, called for within the plan so on the bottom here it's 10 rivets and on the top it's 10 rivets um, so I'll, what I'll probably do is just lay out my rivet fan so that I've got 10 rivets in the allotted space and call it good and I'll show you that when I get to that point so this is the skinning process of the horizontal stabilizer up to this point and I think what I'll probably do is film a if I remember to do it I, I will try to film the uh, bending the skin for the elevator uh, because I'll use exactly the same process as I did with this one so um, one thing you got to be really careful about and this actually happened when I had these clamped is I've got a little bit of a, a dimple that kind of formed itself in here you can see it looks really pronounced in the reflection there it's actually you can't even feel it really with your thumb but it's there um, what I'll have to do is use the back of a large mixing spoon and just kind of work that out a little bit and I'll get that out as best I can but I don't want to scrap this whole piece likewise I've got a bit of a bit of a kink right here and really all that the reason that happened was because I was pushing when I was pushing down on the on the board um, and when I had my clamping blocks in place you know just a slight twist of the you know your hand when you're pushing on something or if you're holding on to one a clamping block and you twist it slightly you'll end up crimping the material but it is what it is I'm not building a hanger queen here and uh, I don't like wrinkles and cre creases as much as the next person but uh, I'm not gonna recut the skin and do it all over this is uh, my first airplane and she's gonna be a bush plane and she's not gonna be pretty by the time I'm done flying her around in the bush so I'm not too worried about it this time probably won't win any awards but it is what it is so all right everybody well I'm uh, in the process of skinning the horizontal stabilizer you can see I've got the bottom surface uh, cleat coat on underneath uh, everything is square everything's lined up perfectly I picked it up off the table flipped it over and was just dinking around seeing how the uh, nose radius was going to fit in there and this really is a two-person job um, I inadvertently put smileys all over the nose radius you can see them right there right there and right there and right there there's four there's a fifth one right there so one two three four five quite large ones this strictly was just carelessness on my part and the odd thing is is I've already skinned a few structures and I know that this is a possibility and I know this is a problem across a large or a, a long uh, bend and I was just overzealous and too eager to see how this uh, skin was gonna form around the uh, um, skin here and uh, I did this to myself it's totally totally my fault so what I'm gonna have to do is uh, I've got to take the skin off anyway so I can pre-drill the holes. I'm going to have to try to do the best I can and work the um, smileys out with the back of a spoon uh, as best I can and get them smoothed out. The nice thing is, is when you put these under tension, when you when you actually bend the radius under tension as much as as much as it will be when I when I ratchet this down, um, those will have a tendency visibly to kind of disappear you'll you'll if they're really bad you'll see them but as much of them as I can work out they'll kind of go away and furthermore the two in the very kind of center here those are going to be covered up by a, a fairing anyway so I'm not super worried about it really it's just uh, frustrating because this is a big expensive piece of metal that I was hoping to avoid this with and now I've got five that I literally just put in there by not watching what I was doing so uh, more on that. I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this and get the uh, other side pre-drilled so I can do it uh, or uh, put it on and then uh, we'll go from there. But 
yeah, what a disappointment, guys. I was really hoping to avoid that, and I knew better, and now the question is, do I cut a whole new skin? I've already match drilled it to the <laughs> to the spars, which would make uh, match drilling the second skin much more difficult, but I'm not going to rebuild the tail. It's just too much work, so wish me luck. All right, one last comment I want to make about skinning this horizontal stabilizer. I actually put the wrong side on first. Uh, it is much easier to start with the flat side and match drill that and then use the ratchet straps to draw down the curve side. And for whatever reason, um, I did it backwards than that. And the reason it's harder to do that is because when you have your bend in your skin, it naturally wants to follow this curve all the way to when you get to here. So you're just drawing it around this portion. Because of the way that I did this now, I have to bend the skin not only up this way, but then I also have to bend it even farther around. And so um, I think that's part of why I ended up kinking the skin where I did. It just didn't want to follow the natural curvature, so I ended up with waviness in it. And when you bend against waviness, you end up with those smileys. So, you know, I'm not, uh, not proud of these mistakes, and uh, I don't actually like showcasing them to everybody. But on the other hand, I don't want you guys to make the same mistakes that I'm making during building. So hopefully uh, my mistakes are your education. And I'm really disheartened by this because I just don't like those those dings and dents in there that now I have to deal with the blemishes. But like I said, the two worst ones will be covered up by a fairing, whatever I can't work out of them. And the other one will just be where it is. And that's just going to be that, unfortunately. So anyway, more to come on this. I'm actually very pleased with how it's being, uh, how everything is laying out properly and, and being square and everything else. But this is what happens when you just get careless or you get eager and you don't pay close enough attention to what you're doing. I, I learned a ton about this process just simply building the rudder from scratch. Uh, I've learned so much more by building the parts from scratch. And now this horizontal stabilizer is teaching me an awful lot about assembly. So the learning curve is quite steep and it's uh, a painful experience in some respects. But we will uh, get through it. Hopefully the finished product doesn't look too rough. If it gets to be that bad, I'll just build the whole darn tail over again. <laughs> if I don't like it at the end, but I'm open not to do that because I've got a lot of time into this. With the exception of the spars, I could actually make all the ribs and the skin in very short order. But uh, the spars would take some time and those are a lot of metal. And I don't even know if I have enough metal of the length that I need to cut and make new spars. So we'll see you next time. That's all for this video. Be sure to like, comment, or subscribe, and let me know if you have any requests for future video content. As always, thanks for watching, and good luck with your projects.